Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge and in this video I'm going to do a couple of things. Well, I'm going to talk about it first and then we'll jump into what's actually happening. So, those of us that own one of these, uh, you know, they've been around now for quite some time, especially if you own an original one like this switch here. This is the 2017 model that my kids now play the most with. You can see I've got a screen protector on that they have actually cracked it. Um, but uh, yeah, these are seven years old now. And if you've used them as much as we've been using them, they're starting to show their age. They're getting a bit sort of scratched here and there. Uh, and especially with this one, uh, the fan is starting to make a pretty awful noise. Um, it's not crazy, the fan's still spinning, but you know, once these things heat up, that fan starts whirring away and it's not great to listen to whilst you're trying to play your games. So in this video, I'm going to be stripping this down. I'm going to be replacing the thermal paste because that would have gotten very old as well and I'm sure it's gone crusty and not much use. Uh, replacing the fans, I have a new one of these little fans here to be put inside. Um, and then what I thought was, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we could give this a bit of a refresh as well? Like try and, you know, make it look nice and new again. Uh, so replacing things like that, that glass cover on the front. But the biggest thing I'm gonna do, and I was very nicely sent this by the guys over ex extreme rate, is a new case for the Switch. So uh, I'll flash something up on the screen now of the website. Uh, but if you go over to extremerate.com and I'll stick a link below, they do an absolute plethora of new cases for quite a lot of consoles. And in this instance, the Switch. Um, you know, even some of the retro consoles like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, but then even later stuff like the new Steam Deck and so on. So there's loads of different cases you can buy on there. I reached out to these guys and they sent me this for free not sponsored they didn't ask anything of me i told them that i'd love to do a video on a repair and it'd be nice to use one of their cases in that job and they said yeah no problem they sent it over but there was no expectation so whatever i think of this i'll give you my honest opinions as i'm doing it you know i haven't done it yet, as you can see so i'll show you what's in the box and then what we've had a look through there i'll jump over to the footage of me doing it which i'll be doing after this video obviously because i'm going to sit here shortly I might stick a movie on. I'm going to have a crack at doing this, but I'll leave the camera running. Obviously, I'll mute the sound and uh, we'll play some music over. But hopefully, you'll be able to get an idea of how difficult or easy this job is. And I'll do a bit of a voiceover as well so I can tell you the key parts of changing the fan, doing the thermal paste, replacing the case, uh, and so on and so forth. So, hopefully, you know, something to learn from it as we go. But if we crack open the box, we can take a look inside. Um, but I went with the Super Nintendo looking um, case that they do very cool so this is it here this is the back plate and you can see the kickstand there uh, so yeah it looks like a, a super nintendo on the front uh, and then you get your sort of a manual inside which gives you website directions to go and actually do the repair job so they have instructions there to guide you through um, you get all the little bits and pieces you're going to need to do the job essentially and even which i think is super handy is a nice little uh, screwdriver so this comes in here with the two bits you're going to need with the screws on the super Nintendo, on super nintendo because i'm looking at the case on the actual switch itself uh, and then of course you also get your joy cons so you can replace the shells on your joy cons so if i grab these you can now i'll just grab one so you can see what it looks like um but yeah this is the uh this is the shell for the joy cons you can see it's got the the colors again to match the actual back piece uh, and then you've got the various bits of screws. You've also then got the button, so you can give it that Super Nintendo feel as well when you do the buttons. Uh, so that's really nice. And then, yeah, they actually also input in there a whole bunch of fresh new screws as well. Because one thing I can tell you is that if you've got an older Switch, the screws, they haven't aged well. I mean, I know one that I tried to remove literally sheared off inside the Switch. So uh, definitely be careful when you're doing that. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice little product. Well, well, very nicely packaged. Um, really high quality plastic. Like it feels just very premium. Like no problems whatsoever. I'm really happy with the way it looks and feels. Uh, the, the proof will be in the pudding. The proof will be uh, in actually how easy is this to do? You know, is it is it something that you know an everyday person can do? A novice, a novice like me, I'm no I'm no expert when it comes to these sorts of things. I'll give it a crack. I'll follow the instructions. And I will definitely be giving it a rating sort of, you know, on its difficulty level to do. Um, but yeah, the, the three things we're going to do in this video are replace the thermal paste on the heatsink, which I know is a, a job that needs doing. Replace that fan because that fan is dying. And then give the whole system a bit of a refresh. So hopefully when I come back, uh, I'm showing you a really nice looking switch. All right? So I'll see you shortly. 
I'm going to keep this short because if you want proper guides, go over to Extreme Hacks website. They've got much better videos than I've got on how to do this. But essentially, I'm taking out all of the case screws at this point to reveal the metal uh, shield panel underneath. Once you've exposed this, you take out all of the screws around the edging. There's quite a few of them. Take them out and then you should be able to reveal the main board. Remembering to move that SD card as well. It just pops off very easily once you take the screw out. Once you're onto the main board, you can have a couple of things you can do here, but this is where I'm going to do the heat sink so I can do the thermal paste. So essentially, I take the screws off of where the pipe is and then pull the fan out uh, along with it, that sort of grill area. Once I've got that exposed, I'm able to then take the fan and then clean up with a brush and also some tweezers to get rid of that crusty old uh, thermal paste that's in there. Uh, as you can see now, I'm gonna replace the uh, new fan very easily, just slide in the ribbon cable, then put the two screws back in again. Uh, now it's time to sort of give the whole area a bit of a clean because uh, yeah, you don't want any of that old crusty uh, thermal paste laying around. So I got at this point, I actually use my airbrush. I use that to blow out some of the dust and then I use bits of tissue or a uh, toothbrush to uh, or even a soft um, brush to brush away all of the dust and so on so i'm watching this at full speed as well so you're getting a narration over the top uh, and as you can see i've put some thermal paste back in then i've replaced the heat sink and there we go we've got that back in again so we've done two of the main jobs here which is the replacement of the fan and the replacement of the heat sink now remember um, wherever you saw thermal paste before is where you want it again so this has thermal paste between the cpu and the heat sink pipe and then the heat sink pipe and that metal shielding so make sure you replace it back on there once you've cleaned it off and then it's a case of just putting everything back together again. I definitely gave everything a bit of a clean with some alcohol and a cloth as I was going around. Uh, and then put all the screws back in as you found them. And then this is where I then switched to, instead of putting the original case on, I'm now actually going to put on the Super Nintendo case from Extreme Rate. So I'm just checking everything's okay here. I definitely went back and forth a few times because this is the first time I've done it. And it's um, yeah difficult to see which screws went where if you weren't careful about where you placed them. So here I'm having to take the original back and actually take some parts off. So things like the game cartridge slots, you need to remove that from your old case. And also the kickstand, there is a component there that allows the stand to come in and out. So you need to take those two black things off of your original case. And again, please go to Extreme Weight's website below. If you, if you buy one of these, follow their guide. It's significantly better than any other guide I've seen on the internet, frankly. Um, these guys have got very professional videos just use this one as a quick quick guide because i'm going to show you in 10 minutes where they show you very slow very poignant videos about whatever you need to be able to do so here we're just taking these grill stickers and putting them over and then we reattach the back side of the switch put in the screws and there we go i'm happy with how that's looking I'm pretty sure i do a test at this point just to make sure the fan works and then i'm actually going to go ahead and peel off that um case peel off that glass there we go look this glass is always satisfying nice cracking of the glass as it comes off to replace that in the future so now this is actually the next day you may notice a slight change in clothing um but uh yes yeah, so i actually decided to take a break that evening and do the joy cons the next day at this point i've already done the left hand joy con i did that off camera because i knew it was going to be difficult and i wanted to just get some practice so this is now the right hand joy con um, which actually turned out to be the diff more difficult of the two because it has something that the left hand con doesn't have which is the ir reader and the um nfc reader for the amiibos so these are just a couple of extra bits it didn't really make it any more difficult apart from just being aware that they're there what did make this way more difficult is that the actual thumb controller the connection point for that is in a really difficult place to get to um, underneath the sort of middle housing so uh, the videos will show you how to get there and you'll be able to follow that cable and get it if you have this version of the Joy-Con there must be different revisions of Joy-Cons um, so anyway I've got the cable in because I'm not only just replacing the case here I'm also replacing the actual Joy-Con controllers so the thumbsticks I found a place on eBay I thought on Amazon that did six of these little thumb controllers for about £10 again I'll put a link in the description below if you're listening um, and you can get those it just means that you can 
get rid of any old sticks that may be suffering with some um, stick drift and those sorts of things. So, and I've actually found the two ones I've replaced, they just feel great, like you know, just excellent uh, quality. So uh, yeah, now I've got the old case all apart. There's that new thumb stick I'm putting in there. So that's not the original one, that's one of the brand new ones. And I'm just getting that plugged in. And it's a case of now all putting it back together again. And this is where it does get a bit fiddly. You need a few hands. So this is the part here I'm doing where I'm trying to connect that um, ZL, ZL, no, ZR button uh, into its connection point. And you'll notice I'm probably on this bit for a little while because it is in a really particularly difficult place to get to. But we eventually get it in and then we can keep moving on. So we get it all back and there we go got the battery back in again we're going to bring the other side panel in now get that hooked on really nice and easily and there we go we put the screws in and we are done that joy con is good to go welcome back everybody um hopefully you whizzed through that video that i played there but uh it's done look there it is it's uh fully modded and uh with the new case we've got a new screen protector on there so the screen looks nice and fresh and there's the back side as well so you can see what it looks like uh, from the from behind but uh yeah i think it looks absolutely awesome <sighs> I mean, some of it was very tricky, but that's not um, <laughs> extreme rates problem. Uh, that's the switch because uh, some parts of this are very fiddly to put together. Um, is it doable by the average Joe? 100% because I am the average Joe uh, and I managed to get through it. Maybe I had to go back a few steps. I think the first Joy-Con took me about an hour to do. And the second Joy-Con, which is actually arguably the harder one because it's got the IR reader in the bottom of it um, and also where it registers the... Uh, the ami amiibos um there's a couple of extra bits in there but once i felt confident from doing the other one i actually got through that one and did it in 40 minutes so all in all probably two and a half hours to do this entire mod um to this but remember we also not only did the awesome case from extreme rate uh, but we also did thermal post replacement and we did a fan replacement and the screen protector so all of that in two and a half hours to have now what looks like a, just a brand new switch and and i'm going to put the microphone up to the, to the sorry the fan up to the microphone but you won't hear anything because it's running whisper choir i have checked it is actually running and it's keeping the system nice and cool there's no overheating at all but definitely replacing that fan and that thermal paste was a well worthwhile job um so yeah i mean you know um definitely follow the instructions on the website so extreme rate have youtube guides and everything they have um i did have to keep sort of rewinding it forwarding it rewinding it forwarding it pausing it and going through it but actually once i'd kind of got the hang of it um i did the second joy con without really looking at any referencing because i just felt confident from doing the first one that essentially take out the screws anything holding it to the casing take it away and then almost just go back on on and you know keep try and keep things connected if you can you don't necessarily have to disconnect the battery i found for instance um if you could not put any tension on the wires it's probably better to not do to do that and certainly the video shows you to disconnect everything uh, but i found that some of those things are very very fiddly certainly um, on my joy cons my joy cons i don't know if there's certain revisions of them i'm sure there must be mine were a little bit different from the video itself so for instance this right hand this uh yeah right hand joy con um the actual thumbstick the connection to it was very different to the video and actually really fiddly to get in but um yeah i managed to get it done and i'm just well chuffed with the results i think it looks absolutely superb um so yeah get over to extreme rate if you fancy look at they've got so many designs i'm now thinking about all the things i want to mod because there is actually a mod for the switch dock as well so that when this is docked in it has that similar super nintendo look on the front of it so i mean let's be see that may be the next video maybe but uh yeah i'm well chuffed with this it looks so cool they've got so many designs like i say i'm not being asked to do anything i reached out to them they said they'd love to help me uh, and i said i would do a video on it but i would say it would be my own words if are there any complaints i'll try and think of anything but it's not i couldn't complain about the products it's the, the it's it's the switch that's the problem because you've got to take it apart and put it back together again um but the actual product that they supply you i mean everything's in the box you've got the screws in the box the buttons are in the box they even give you the screwdriver with the various heads if i had one one thing to sort of complain about um the tip on so the two heads they give you on the screwdriver which is a nice quality little screwdriver the actual bit on the end the phillips head bit 
wore away so fast. Um, so I actually ended up swapping to my own screwdriver for that. The tri-wing one seems to be nice and solid, but I don't know if the uh, the Phillips head ones are a bit of a softer metal, maybe. Um, and I, I, I found after a few screws I'd done, um, it just kind of... It, it lost its ability to, to grip on anything so uh yeah that was a that was the only but that's such a minor complaint literally everything else worked fantastically and the quality of the product seems absolutely fine so I, i'm really chuffed um if i could do one thing it would be to put a gray bezel on this but i have looked at bezel mods and you literally have to heat treat the screen to get the screen out and it's like super involved so you know what i'm happy with just having the black um i do know that you can get screen protectors that have an edge as well so maybe that's a cheating way of doing it just get a gray screen protector to put on there because actually to mod this front screen um i think that might be a step too far for me frankly but yeah really happy with this i hope you enjoyed the video i know it wasn't really a tutorial but you don't need a tutorial from me because these guys do that fantastically. So this is more just a quick look at what the product is and what it looks like, the finished article. And I hopefully you would agree that the finished article is pretty awesome. And I now have an old school Super Nintendo as my Switch. And I have a few other Switches, so I'm going to be looking at what other ones I can do. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, all right? I'll put links and everything in the description below. Check it out. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.